Today, we'll take a quick look at how we put together this DIY overhead bounce, and how you can use it to create a nice sized, controllable top light for your scene. That's light enough to work with cheaper boom arms, but can also be useful with any sturdy arm. One issue I've often come across when shooting on a budget is safely rigging a decent sized overhead light above a scene or subject. If you're working with cheaper stands and cheaper arms, generally they'll have lower payloads, so you're unable to use a heavier light safely, let alone with a modifier or softbox. Now there are compact, lightweight lighting units available, but they tend to come with their own softboxes, which are usually quite small, with only one type of diffusion. And the only way we can control light spill with these is a grid, which is either on or off, with no further flexibility to control where our light is going. So let's take a look at how we made our own top light bounce, solving some of these issues. We used an A1 sized stretched canvas, cable ties, hook and loop velcro tape, drawing pins, black material, and bounce material. We found the middle of both ends of our canvas, and then lined up a cable tie with the center. Using a braddle, we made two holes through the cable tie and wood frame, giving us space to insert two screws, attaching the cable ties to both ends of the frame. After this, we took our black material, which was already slightly longer than the length of our canvas, measured out around 18 inches, and cut off a rectangle. We repeated this three times, cutting a rectangle for each side of the canvas, each length with a little overlap. We pinned our rectangle materials to the edges of the canvas frame. Using the overlap in length as a way to make sure that we had no gaps when the bounce is hung up. After this, I wrote down all the names of my patrons because they're all fantastic. And then, sticking on one side of the velcro tape, we made an outline around the front of the canvas. We then cut our unbleached muslin bounce material to the size of the canvas then stuck the other side of the velcro tape in a similar position. We also stapled the ends of the tape to the material to prevent it from ripping off when handling. Then we could simply attach the material. The great thing about this is that you can do this with any bounce material. In this case, we used unbleached muslin, but we could make a small collection of different bounce materials with velcro tape attached. So if we want to, we can swap out and change the quality of our bounce using the same frame. After this, we tightened our cable ties around our boom arm, making sure we had enough space to slide it on and off of the arm. You can also add cable ties to the other sides of the frame so that it can be hung in the preferred orientation. Since the frame and material don't weigh much, you don't put too much pressure on the arm. Although it's still a good idea to counterweight, as the weight distribution will still affect the balance of the stand and arm. So let's take a look at how we can use the frame for overhead light. But before we do, a quick reminder that you can use my code ROBELLIS over on Zyro when you build your website or storefront, giving you more discount, extra months free of charge, and a custom domain for a year. If you need a professional way to showcase your work, or even sell digital products, Zyro gives you all the tools to do so, with full customization, an easy to use drag and drop system, and speedy loading times. Use my code ROBELLIS, or click on the link in the video description to get up to 72% off your website or storefront, with three extra months free, with one year, two year, or four-year plans, along with a custom domain for a year. The best and most cost-effective way to use a top light like this is to fire a controlled beam of light into it. Using something like a projector or spotlight mount, 
which are available for popular existing lighting systems over a few different price ranges. We're going to be using the Nanlite Forza 60B with its projector attachment, which we've taken a look at in a previous video. Here we have our subject sat at a table with a soft yet moody light falling on him from overhead. To achieve this, we hung our bounce on our boom arm above the table with our Forza 60 and projection attachment firing up into it at an angle. You can see that the black material we pinned to the sides of the canvas are acting as flags, blocking the light from spreading around the room and allowing it to fall into a controlled pool below. Our subject is a little bit back from the bounce, allowing one of our flags to block some of the light from his face, creating more shape and less direct light. You can see that there was more light falling onto his arms and the table, which we brought down in post to match the light on his face. So let's lift up the front flag. With the front flag lifted, our light is now free to spill out over our subject and onto the back wall. Whilst we've lost some control over the light in one direction, our side flags are still down, which means we still retain some of the shape of the light on the face. But now we're able to achieve a slightly different look, with more of our subject lit and more light on our back wall. If we close our front flag and lift up our side flags, we get a slightly different look again. Because our light is now escaping from both sides of the bounce, we've lost some of the shape and contrast on the sides of the face that we had in the previous two setups. We also have a little spill on the back wall. You can see that we've already created three different looks simply by adjusting our flags. In our second setup, we shot our subject sat on a sofa right against the wall. Not an ideal situation to shoot in, as this can lead to a flat looking shot. But by using our overhead bounce with our Forza and projection mount, we have a large enough light to cover the entire sofa, whilst being able to use our flags to keep the light off the back wall, preventing our image from looking too flat. If we want to fill in our shadows a little, we can. In this case, we simply bounced an LED panel from the ceiling, set to a slightly cooler colour temperature to bring the shadows and the general ambience up slightly. In this shot, we boomed the frame above our subject in a bath, with our light shooting into it. Although we shot this with our subject fully clothed in an empty bath, this could easily be a great solution for overhead lighting when you're shooting someone in a bath full of water. You're not hanging any electrics above the bath as you're simply bouncing light, yet you still have some control over the light spill, making it a much safer yet still flexible option. Now this isn't a perfect solution, as generally, you'll need to find spaces to hide, angle, and shoot your light into the frame, which can mean you're not always utilizing the entire surface area of the bounce. But it can be extremely useful, especially when you're working on a budget and it offers a decent level of control, size and flexibility, and is lightweight enough to not be too worrying from a safety perspective. Patrons get extended, ad-free versions of my YouTube videos, along with a bunch of exclusive breakdowns and extra content. 
I use music from AudioSocket in my videos. Click my referral link in the video description and use the code ROBELLIS when you sign up for a free month of the best and most diverse range of stock music available. Use my code ROBELLIS over at Zyro to get up to 72% off your website or storefront with three extra months free with one year, two year or four year plans along with a custom domain for a year. I use ArtGrid for stock footage. Get an extra two months free when you sign up using the link in the video description.